So the uh, 440 uh, backhoe loader uh, John Deere project continues. Today I got into um, the directional reverser. Yesterday I took out the clutch and everything. So this is what the inside the yokes look like, uh, well the arms that go to the yokes for the directional reverser. That's the shift cover. Uh, I just got set on the bench next to it. This is what you're looking at. Um, I thought it'd be beneficial to kind of see what what these directional reversers look like um, compared to what's in the pictures, but it, it kind of helps when you see all this stuff. But I bet basically, this uh, sits in oil and it's got these clutch plates, uh, steel plates alternating with these other driven plates. Uh, and so basically, what it does is it mashes this together, engages. Uh, so that's you know, in forward, uh, one set of gears is working, and reverse the other set of gears. It has this shaft that goes to it, this shaft goes into the housing. Uh, front of the housing, which I won't be able to show you uh, very good because the way it's turned up. But notice there's some shims. That's how you uh, set the preload for the bearing is with some shims. So keep track of those. And that's what you would see when you look at the housing and you take that cover off. Inside of here, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but basically it's like a differential. Uh, it has alternating gears uh, inside of it. And so the spline goes, hits that, and then another uh, shaft comes out of the back side of that. So that's how the directional reverser kind of looks. So let's take a look at uh, the, where the clutch goes. Uh, so I took this off. Definitely needs a new clutch, new pressure plate. Um, so I split that. There's a piece of housing missing, but basically this comes into the where the transmission is going to go. I'll definitely need a new bearing for this uh, shaft. The bearing is in pretty bad shape. Uh, but that's what it looks like in between the housings. Uh, this housing wouldn't technically be, um, it does allow oil to come through, but there's no seal, so it technically shouldn't get oil through there. Um, those holes don't go through. Uh, you can see the plate for the next one sits right here and would be closing these little holes here. Uh, so there shouldn't be any oil. You put oil in the housing for the directional reverser, but that oil is technically not uh, really shared with the transmission. Although in my case it was full of water because it had filled up uh, with water and oil so much that it, I believe, had come out of one of these bolt holes um, and seeped over into the housing. So I had to drain that, uh, drain the oil, and then I, there was even more uh, when I took this this housing off. So that's the one side of the brake shaft, but I did take the housing off of the other side. So we'll take a look at that uh, to see. So this is uh, kind of a rough rough thing. The brakes, my brakes were pretty much glazed uh, pretty bad. So you can see you have to kind of take um, here and, and split this entire piece of, of housing, uh, axle housing, in order to get to the um, seals, to renew the seals for the brake, uh, what I believe they call the pinion shaft. But that's the shaft that actually comes through and um, that one drives another gear, uh, that's why they call it a, a power assisted. So it comes through this shaft, which is the brake shaft that you just saw, has a big uh, big gear that comes back through into this part of the housing, um, and that's where the, the wheels are actually turned. So technically, uh, the differential unit is this shaft uh, coming out to this. Uh, the power assisted comes out to, uh, that shaft turns a much bigger gear on another shaft. Uh, which is the axle, actual axle shafts. I don't know if you can see it in there, but you could see the PTO. There's a PTO um, shaft that comes back, but in my case, since it's the backup, it's plugged off with a cap. So this is the this is the directional reverser housing. Uh, so I have some cleanup to do there. I still have the rear one I have to press out. Uh, the rear clutches have to be pressed out. You take a nut, there's actually a, a metal ring that goes around this that I already took off. I tried to like tap it through but it wouldn't go so I'm going to just press it so I don't mess it up. But it gets one of these rings with the tabs folded over to hold the, the nut in place. Um, it's a it's a three inch socket nut um, so definitely if you don't have one uh, you might want to pick one up to take that piece off. A couple big sockets uh, I had to buy for this. Uh, one of them was the uh, two, two and a quarter I think it was for the axle nuts, uh, and then I would need a three inch for that one. So that's the housing. This is the side where the cover would, would bolt onto. We'll skip back to what I was talking about with the uh, pinion shaft 
and how that turns a big gear. Um, so basically, there's uh, this shaft turns, and that one turns a much bigger gear that you can just see poking through those um, through the holes there. So there's a, a huge gear. This has a gear on it and turns an actual uh, a much bigger gear inside that housing. That's why they call it the power assist. So this is the end of the axle shaft, the actual drive axle sh axle shaft. Um, and so I had to take this apart. Uh, have to get a new gasket. Obviously, you can see it's pretty cruddy. Um, but let me uh, really quick pause, and I'll take this cover off, and you can see that gear again. Okay, so I took the cover off, uh, and so you can see that that big gear, um, that turn in this shaft, turns this big gear, and that's where they come up with the term power assisted. Uh, so it's got a pretty fair uh, gear reduction, and um, so you can kind of tell first gear is is really truly a grainy low. Now this is filled with oil, uh, this housing, so you'll take a plug out of the the bottom has a plug to it, so you can take that plug out, and this would be where you'd where you'd fill it uh, to fill this portion of of it. So that's um, pretty much where I'm at today. So I have to take the other half off. Uh, so this would be the the next project. Uh, I might actually order all the stuff before I um, take this piece off, and then I could just uh, put all the seals and put everything back in at the same time. So it's been a long day, um, a lot of rusted bolts, I uh, had to pound the, that other hub off, uh, so that was a little bit of work. But um, here's the current progress, and uh, I'll keep everything updated so that both I have a video documentary of it, but in case anybody else is looking for um, information or some video or some pictures about what it takes to, to uh, disassemble and, and fix and repair a uh, 440 John Deere 440 uh, wheel loader and backhoe. So, until next time.